Welcome to the second part of the linear programming using Python series. So in this uh, tutorial we will learn about uh, how to solve a real world a linear programming problem using uh, Python. So let's do a brief recap of what we learned uh, in the last uh, tutorial. Uh, we started with a brief uh, theory of uh, what is linear programming. So in linear programming, we uh, try to solve, um, try to maximize a linear function subject to some constraints, right? So what we do is uh, we formulate the problem. We have the objective function. So this is the objective function. Either we want to maximize it or minimize it. Um, in Python, actually in SciPy, you know, the maximization facility is not available. So we have to convert that to a minimization problem, which is very easy to do. Um, then we have set of constraints. So again, we define this constraint in, in, in equation forms. So that's easy to understand. Um, so we then provide the information. Basically, we provide the coefficients of the, uh, of the objective function and, and the constraint to the Python module and it solves for us so it gives for what value of x and y we um, optimize the objective function okay and optimization could be either maximization or minimization in a real world setup we could be let's say maximizing profit in the case of a manufacturing problem whereas we could be minimizing losses or minimizing cost right so we can formulate in whatever way we want and depending on the problem at hand, either we will maximize or we will minimize. And both come under what is known as optimization. And we need to take into consideration the constraints, right? In a manufacturing problem, constraint could be constraint on manpower, constraints on uh, raw material, um, or constraints on um, warehouse capacity, things like that right um, so these are some of the things which will be constrained in a more uh, manufacturing related problem and how we solve it well we import the scipy package in scipy uh, scipy dot optimize we import this function called lean prog okay and once we have formulated the problem like this in a mathematical form like how i see here we provide uh, input to the function, the linpro function, with some in a matrix form. So we first define the objective function. Okay. Um, so you can convert a maximization problem to a minimization problem just by changing the uh, sign. Okay. So it was plus two plus one. We just convert it to minus two minus one and become a minimization problem because linpro function in Python uh, only minimizes. Uh, it cannot maximize this. So it's nothing but just change the sign of the coefficient and maximization problem becomes minimization problem. So in essence, we get the same, right? So when you maximize a negative, you actually uh, minimize the positive and the other way around, right? Uh, and then we provide the coefficient of the LHS, uh, which is nothing but you know, the coefficient of the left hand side of the equations, we provide that in a, a matrix form. Uh, we also provide the right hand side, right? Right hand side in this case is let's say 22, 15 and 12, left hand side, okay, 2 and 1, minus 5 and plus 4, minus 1, 4, minus 1, 4, right? So these are the left hand side of the matrix and then we have right hand side. We provide that separately. Okay, uh, we could have inequalities, but we could also have equality. That means where we have equal to sign, right? Um, and then we call the function. We have the Lindbergh function. Then we provide the objective function. This is the syntax C equal to, and then you provide the objective function, the matrices that we have just defined here, right? O, B, G. So that's something we provide. Followed by, yeah, the... Um, a underscore ub basically the inequalities so a is the matrix that takes into account the the coefficients of the left hand side so 
we have defined this LHS variable here, right? So this is what we provide. And then we also provide the RHS. So it's so this A underscore UB, B underscore UB, these are keywords, so you can't change. Okay, but you know, it's nothing but just LHS of the coefficients and RHS of the coefficients. And then you also have bounds, that means uh, if you have constraint on your decision variables x and y, you can also provide boundaries there. Uh, in this case, it has to be the 0 and above. So we have this boundary of 0 to positive infinity for both x and y. Okay, so that's what we learned. And we have various uh, optimization mo modules to use, for example, interior point, which is by default. And then your reverse simplex, and then you have simplex, right? So, uh, yeah, you have multiple methods to uh, choose from. Okay, all right. So we'll take more of a real-world problem this time around. Last time was more of an abstract problem. So this is the real-world problem, and as I mentioned last time also that uh, linear programming is heavily used in uh, manufacturing-related um, setup. Um, so here this um, problem, there are three products to be manufactured in a manufacturing unit and uh, we know actually how much the factory or the company makes profit from each one of these products. Okay, so there's three products X1, X2 and X3 and for every single cell the company makes $10 from, uh, $10 from X1. $20 for X2, $25 from X3, okay? So that's about profit from each one of these products. Total number of products to be produced in a day is maximum of 50. Well, actually it's 80, okay? Um, I just forgot to change this number. It is to be 80 and then we are, we are okay. So, Total number of products that you can produce in a factory is 80 because of shortage of manpower. So that becomes our constraint. And the first statement here, right? Uh, the here we saw, you know, how much profit you can make. So profit is just our dish, uh, objective function, right? We want to maximize profit. And you'll understand better when I put it in a mathematical form, right? Um, and then you have another constraint, which is raw material. So raw material. Uh, is used for all three of these products x1 x2 x3 for x1 you need three units of raw material for x2 you need uh, um, two units of uh, raw material um, uh, yes for two units of, and for x3 you need four units of raw material okay and there are uh, total 200 units of raw material available per day. You can't have more than that. So that's another constraint, right? So given these two constraints, how do we um, maximize the profit? I mean, how do we, as in, how many uh, units of X1, X2, and X3 should be produced in a, in a day so that um, the profit uh, is maximized? Okay, so it's as simple as that. You have three options, three products to be produced and how many X1, how many X2, how many X3 you should produce. It's very simple to uh, understand given the constraints, given the constraint on manpower, given the constraint on um, raw material, right? Um, and also, you know, you cannot produce negative unit of raw material. So all three of these products, X1, X2, X3 should be greater than equal to zero, right? So that goes without saying, but it's also good to keep it in mind. So here is our objective function. We want to maximize 10x plus 20x2, uh, 10x1 plus 20x2 plus 25x3. So 10 is the profit from x1, okay? x1 is the number of product from x1, so you just multiply. That's the profit you make from x1. Uh, then you have 20 x2 that means 20 is the profit from each single product of x2 and then x2 is the number of product number of products of x2 so you know you multiply that to get the profit and similarly for x3 and when some you add them you get the total profit that you make from these three products subject to the manpower constraint and the constraint on the raw material so the manpower constraint is where you know uh, in a day you can produce a maximum 80 
products so you need to then decide how many x1 how many x2 and how many x3 but total is known has to be less than a equal to 80 so that's our first constraint the second constraint is that on the raw material so for x1 you need three units of raw material for x2 you need two units of raw material for x3 you need you need four units of raw material so so total of raw material in a day available to you is 200 hence 3x1 plus 2x2 plus 4x3 has to be less than equal to 200 you cannot uh, go above that so that's the limitation and all three x variables should be greater than zero that means we cannot have a negative number of products right so it's it's obvious okay um so we will also use linprog this time is something we have imported from scipy.optimize um, now this is a maximization problem right we need to uh, maximize the profit uh, however linprog as i mentioned is unable to uh, perform a maximization so we have to convert that to a minimization problem so it's very simple simply multiply negative one right uh, just change the coefficient with the sign and you will convert that to a minimization problem although in essence it is a maximization it's just that you know it, the maximization in minimization are interchangeable if you change the sign okay but the objective doesn't change it's, it's the same we still maximize the profit so in so we are simply minimizing the negative part right so which in prin principle is nothing but maximizing the positive part right you change back the sign it becomes a maximization problem again so um okay so this is what we are minimizing right and then we need to provide the 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 coefficients of the objective function and the coefficient of the uh, constraints to the uh, optimization module um, in this case is linfrog okay so here we provide the coefficients of the objective function uh, okay so minus 10 minus 20 and minus 25 so we provide in a matrix form then you have coefficient of the lhs right you remember how we did last time around so there are two constraints here right the first concerns on manpower second one on raw material lhs would take all the coefficients from the left hand side of the equation of the inequality equations and take the coefficient so it's one 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 right in all three you have the coefficient of one so that becomes the first matrix uh, first element of the matrix uh, for lhs and the second one is three two four so three right look look at this equation so first coefficient is three second coefficient is two third one is four so we put that in a matrix from element second element right so that's our lhs so lhs is about the right hand side of the the value in the right hand side of the equation 80 in the first case 200 in the second case right so we put that in a matrix form so here is right by the way these are not keywords so you can change any to any name so up to you then you have boundary conditions in this case it's not needed as i mentioned in the last video that um, by default in linfrog your boundary condition is from zero to infinity and in this case we have this boundary condition of zero to infinity uh, that means it has to be positive zero or any positive number but if you want also negative number you want to change the this default boundary condition you can also do that but here we don't need that because by default it serves our purpose finally we will then do the optimization so using the linfrog function here we provide the optimization routine with the op the coefficient of the uh, objective function right c equal to obj so this is something we have defined over here so this matrix is then um, is then given as an input a underscore ub and then b underscore ub basically this is the matrix for the left hand side this is the matrix for the right hand side okay so if you're familiar with linear programming uh, mathematics you know you can very well understand it's just a matrix right a x equal to b so you want to find x um, right so if you remember your matrix algebra it's nothing but a inverse b something like that and you find inverse of x x right so it, it something similar okay but you may not have close form solution everywhere so 
we therefore um, use uh, optimization routine right and method we can have uh, multiple you can use other methods where we use uh, simplex okay and let us run this part okay so it's just five lines of code and you're able to solve so, so it says optimization terminated uh, successfully uh, how many um, iterations three iterations were needed uh, success here you need all first thing you need to check here is whether it's success equal to true or false if it is false then there is no feasible solution for this optimization problem now not all optimization problem will have a feasible solution all the time you may have problems where you do not have any feasible solution so that's not the case here it's true so that we have a solution and it successfully terminated that means it the values we get are reliable enough um all right so what are these values for x1 x2 and x3 that means remember what our question initially we asked ourselves how many number of x1 how many number of x2 and x3 we should be producing in the in the factory and for for maximizing the profit it says that we should be producing zero number of x1 60 x2 and 20 x3 total has to be 80 right so it's divided 0 60 60 and 20 so the most profitable product is x2 that's what it's saying so that's one thing you can get to know that uh, the product that giving that should you should be maximizing on is x2 because it's giving you more profit um, given the constraint so that has to be uh, also be considered and the product that is giving you least profit is x1 so optimization routine is, is telling us not to produce that at all and in between uh, these two is x3 which is giving us some profit but not as much as uh, what we are earning from product 2 so product 3 is not that profitable but it is more profitable than pro product 1 so that's the um, combination we should be going for uh, right so now in in a more real world problem you ha probably have will have many more constraints it's not just this three four constraints you will have many more constraints uh, and you will probably have many more products also it need not be just two three products could could be also 10 products and so it becomes uh, more complex actually um, but um, the formulation is exactly the same so you can expand it to a much bigger problem it will still give you the answers the formulation is exactly the same so you can play around with this script and if you need this uh, code and uh, the python script let me know i can also share with you uh, you can find my email in the description thank you